Welcome to the United We Scan podcast, the podcast by rural carriers for rural carriers. The views expressed in this podcast do not reflect the views or opinions of the United States Postal Service or the National Rural Letter Carriers Association. We ask that you please consult your assigned union representative for guidance in your local area. Make sure you like this podcast, share with your fellow rural carriers, and subscribe to be notified each time a new episode is uploaded. Please rate this podcast five stars where applicable and leave a comment or question for us below. Thank you. Now, here are the hosts of the United We Scan podcast. All right, just a reminder to everybody in the live stage, this is our opinions and our opinions only, and the views expressed on this podcast are ours and ours alone, and do not express the views or opinions or strategies of the NRLCA or the USPS. And welcome back, everybody. What are we, episode 33, if yeah. I'm thinking correctly? Yeah. Been a week. It's just the three of us this evening. Uh, Josh is off celebrating his uh, wife's birthday with her this evening. So we got Bill and James. James, how was your week? Oh, it was quite interesting and fun overall. Finally got back to facilitator mapping because uh, the postmaster wasn't able to get it done. She's she's well trained on it and does a good job, so I don't bother. But then uh, our supervisor is not very computer literate when it comes to that stuff. So I ended up sitting down and doing mapping with several carriers at the end of the shift. I made sure both they and I were on end of shift duties for that. But other than that, it was actually a pretty easy week overall. My um, my sub on Friday, I, we got box holders on top of other issues in the office. And my sub comes over and goes, hey, you going to use the little feed tub that we stick on the windowsill of the LLV to hold the box holders? And I'm like, uh, I, was, I haven't decided yet. He said, well, I tell you what, if you let me use it today, I'll take the box holder tomorrow. Done. <laughs> Take the box holder tomorrow. <laughs> no brainer right there. No brainer right there. I'm like, yeah, go right ahead. He was perfectly happy doing that for me. I'll, I'll let him do it. You know, but other than that, uh, pretty quiet week overall in the office. Um, not many issues other than, of course, people taking time off because it's summertime and yeah. every single sub in our office working and nobody being able to go, hey, uh, I'm not feeling too good. No, if you don't feel too good, get your butt in the office. We don't have anybody. <laughs> but if you got heat sickness, don't come in. My postmaster is really cool. We did have a stand up on the heat illness prevention again. Obviously, that's coming down the chain because of what's going on on the city side. But I didn't actually sign it. Anyway. Bill, how was your week there? Well, um, same thing with the uh, heat illness and de dehydration, rehydration. We, we've had five two-minute talks this week, you know, Monday to Friday. And it's like, okay, folks, I guess they have to drum it in there, you know, the, for their own protection. The problem of it is, is that, A, it, it's rote. They don't really care. It, it got so hot one day this week, and we didn't have any waters in our office. So, you know, I, I stopped by Giant and filled up a, a 48 uh, pack of uh, Gatorade and got two bags of ice, put it on top, and put it in the middle of our floor. Told everybody to help themselves too. I mean, you know, I, I'm the asshole in the office, but I care more about those people than than management does. Light week, uh, moderately light week as far as mail and uh, parcels and flats, all concerned. Oh, don't you just love the advos, aka marriage mail, red plums, whatever, when they have a blow in that goes in cockeyed and and you know I case mine because it makes me you know really fast on the route. And you're sitting there just, you know, turn that thing sideways, left and right, and cussing. And then, you know, pick up the next beat, turn it right, cuss, and stick it in there. But, it, you know, people sit there and go, well, why, is, why do you do that? It saves me an hour and ten minutes on my route because I don't even have to think about the next mailbox to hit. Everybody's getting one except for about five people on my route. And the, the holds are marked and everything. So it, you just blow through the route. Uh, I really love uh, box holders. <laughs> I do. This week too. Yours was messed up this week too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Mine, mine was just all different directions with everything inside of it, literally just falling apart. I lucked out, and the route that I was running Tuesday when ours came in was one of the two zip codes out of the three that does not get them. Oh, lucky. <laughs> so I was like going, "Oh, that's right, it's Advo Day." Huh? <laughs> Darn. 
Sucks to be you guys. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in a Monday. Monday was a day from hell for me. That was, and then it didn't help that I was 20 minutes late getting into the office on Monday. And then, so I started, I clocked in at 7.50 a.m. And I clocked out at like 7.10 p.m. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that 47K really royally kicked my behind Monday. <laughs> Sounds like it. It did. Get to... And it was hot, too. Oh, God, yeah. it was. Even even yeah. along Lake Huron, the breeze was not of any help, like it sometimes is. But now... Well, how other than... were your storms? How were your storms? Um, I actually was looking forward to, I thought we were having one come in on Monday while I was out there. And I was all prepared for it, rolled the window up because I looked at the uh, at my uh, radar to see where it was coming. I'm like, all right, let me roll up this other window just in case. Yeah, I think I got about four or five raindrops and that was it. It went all further, even north, and, and I was kind of bummed. I was really wanting that rain. Other than that, storms-wise, here's haven't been too bad this week. You guys got pummeled last week. Yeah, we had one... The week before, we were out for almost 24 hours without power, but these this week, we had them, and they actually just missed us, went to our south, and just devastated areas like Southfield, and um, yeah, they actually had two tornadoes down in uh, Jackson and uh, Ingham County. Yep, yeah, I saw all that. You know, down south, southeast of Lansing, they had two tornadoes, EF zeros, they weren't much, because they were in open fields, which is a wonderful thing didn't damage anybody's property but that doesn't give you a good answer of what the actual strength of the tornado was all right now so. i uh i had one day on just my ox route this week that was wednesday no thursday excuse me was it thursday or was it wednesday no it was thursday so no wednesday gosh i don't even know sorry guys it's been an emotional couple days um yeah wednesday was the only yeah. day i ran my ox route had the double friday double saturday I'm on the 47K Monday through Thursday this week, and then I'm covering one of the other routes Friday. Our one RCA, who I know I mentioned in the past, just can't seem to even deliver my ox route correctly, because I was cleaning up mail Wednesday again. Two missed deliveries, and I had a customer that went on hold Monday. Well, Wednesday, I was pulling their mail out of the mailbox to bring it back to the office. Um, yeah. So on Thursday, why I was running his route because he was not available. He came in and put his notice in. So like, okay, bye. <laughs> but and another one bites the dust. <laughs> pretty much. Other than that, work was pretty much, you know, mail was light. Parcels were heavy, at least first couple days. Kind of, they seem to be tapering off just a tad, but I say that now and I'll walk into 250 again tomorrow. So I, uh, we had some pretty shocking news on the personal home front. So, uh, just kind of put it out there. Everybody knows, you know, I talk about my daughter off and on, you know, the issues I've had in the past, but, uh. We lost one of her friends in her circle of friends on Friday. He, uh, good kid, good, good, just adorable kid. I'm going to miss him to death. He, uh, he would have been 16 this coming Saturday. He just got a moped, then got a part-time job, got a moped, was riding his moped to work. They say he didn't stop. He blew through the stop sign. However, that's what the cops are saying. What, because the way he got hit by the truck from behind, there's no way that truck was doing only 55. He did have a helmet on, but unfortunately, after they life flighted him, he did not make it. Well, his other, his other best friend, who happens to be the male bestie of my daughter, he come over today and we all just kind of sat around for probably an hour and a half this morning, just sitting around, sharing memories of, of him and it first you know when you're trying to help your kid through something like this i mean that's hard you're used to you know relatives older people you know when the kids have an experience losing somebody that close to age and and as a parent that's always our worst fear and having no you know met the kid and hung out with him when they've all come hung out at the house a few times i just yeah this is this is a huge loss so I had to take a nap earlier because I didn't sleep all that much last night with after getting the news. So, well, we're all sorry for your loss on that yeah, one. Yeah, 
this is this is a this is a rough one. His uh, grandmother actually he lived with his grandmother for quite a bit of time, and she actually lives on the route that I'll be taking over when I go full time in a few months. So uh, yeah, this is I'm gonna get a card and have the regular carrier deliver it tomorrow. We're, they've got to go fund me for his expenses, and my daughter and I were able to pull some money together and. Uh, we're going to get that to the family. So, so yeah. All right. Let's go back to topic. Sorry, guys. A little downer there. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, first and foremost, first and foremost, we want to congratulate our brothers and sisters over at UPS for getting a tentative agreement for them to vote on. They have not voted on it yet, but they have a tentative agreement with massive benefits to them. And... Wanted to kind of just give them uh, congratulations on that and say a great job on avoiding a strike with that. Hopefully, as long as you guys vote positively for it. If not, vote how your heart feels on it. But we also have to talk about the ramifications with the post office on this now. What do you guys think? There are none. The post office is the post office. They don't care what the private sector does. They don't care about you know losing any more people they don't care about hiring many more people so uh if they pass this contract on uh thursday well they're supposed to vote on thursday they'll have all the votes in by the following thursday and friday i'll quit and go join ups <laughs> i i think a lot of people are thinking that though i mean i've seen a lot of chatter on the social webs about that yeah yeah you know but there's there's a few caveats in this contract also that affect the Postal Service beyond just carriers deciding to up and go for better pay. Now, part of that contract is they're going to be taking uh, larger parcels off of the Postal Service and giving them to the carriers at UPS to deliver instead of sending them through the Postal Service. So that means less large boxes for us to handle. It's a benefit for us as carriers, but that also means less package volume on our routes. So. There's a benefit and a downfall to it. Could that mean we're going to be getting more smaller parcels in our hampers from UPS that way? You know, where it increases in the number of parcels we deliver, but less volume size, you know, taking up less room in the, in the vehicle. So we're going to have to see how that plays out as well. And even if people leave the Postal Service for this, you have to remember, we start our contract negotiations in April next year. February. Well, February, my my mistake. Um, February is when that starts. Um, I thought it was April, but yeah. my mistake. And uh, when we start doing those, we can, even though they don't listen to the private sector, we have multiple proofs from the private sector saying this is what's going on. And if you want to keep the Postal Service running, you're going to have to do something to keep these people from just jumping ship to UPS and eventually FedEx because FedEx is going to have to do the same thing that UPS did or else they're going to lose people. Well, they, they, base you know, our, they base our wages, supposedly, they base our wages off the private sector, similar dealings. Um, I, I think getting rid of the two-tier pay system is a little leverage for us but not quite ups did away with their two tier system. that's what i'm talking about contract. yeah yeah so it's... did gm yeah and chrysler's in their talks right now so i should correct correction stellantis is in talks with the uaw as well so is ford and gm with their new contract so we'll have to see how those play out as well i mean it's it's a big 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 mess right now and yeah. people are gonna people are gonna jump sh jump ships so, you know, they're going to run like rats fleeing a sinking ship. Oh, they already But, are. yeah, they've been fleeing a sinking ship. And it's not because the ship is actually sinking. It's because of how they've been treated. Meanwhile, we're, we're, now, the, we're the orchestra still playing as it's going down. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, still standing on, we're still standing on the bow of the ship playing our instruments. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture that scene from Titanic, ship. you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you got to remember, though, our elections for national officers come up in just a couple short weeks, and those are the ones that the ones that get elected in are going to be the ones negotiating the contract. The ones that you, the ones that are going in to be delegates, are the ones that vote for those people. 
So if you have delegates and you know your delegates, get with your delegates. Tell them who you want in office. And why? Bill. Because <laughs> your Bill. voice will matter. Shameless Bill. plug. Bill. Shameless plug. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I had something in my throat there. Uh -huh. Yeah, it sounded like a frog, you know, bud. <laughs> why? <laughs> Bill. Uh, or <laughs> president. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> so no, it'll so, be but... yeah. It's I, I'm happy that they uh, didn't have to come to a strike. Uh, obviously, I'll be happier if they take some of these larger Amazon packages because that is what's been killing us lately. Is the big stuff. I'm looking at yeah, going. I, I I was supposed to take. Tuesday, I was supposed to take the LLV to the shop and use the loaner that we have. And I said, that loaner has a jump seat. And he's like, yeah. I said, look at my packages. I ain't fitting those in that truck with a jump seat. I said, you can take it tomorrow or after I get back. <laughs> the truck's running okay for me. So, so that's what they did. Yeah, so had, hopefully that truck is back tomorrow. Days. I've had a couple of days where I couldn't fit parcels in. And I'm like, well, here you go, Soup. You're delivering them. They won't fit. Well, let me see. It, does, it goes from the front glass out the back door. I can't deliver this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. now I, 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 hate, I hate to rain on your parade, okay? But since I know this from firsthand experience with Amazon and their delivery algorithms, the, the size of the package, the weight of the package, and the amount of profit on that package mm -hmm. dictates what they hand off to us. That's why we get all the dog food, the kitty litter, and everything else. And mm -hmm. don't you suppose that UPS also uses that algorithm? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They will take the larger packages that we can't handle. But I don't see a decline in the dog foods and cat litters and, and, and you know, like, like packages that we've been getting for the past five years. Yeah, no, so, I don't see a decline uh, in, know, that heavy, in the heavy stuff, no. No, so uh, I'm I mean, just, I'm they, just happy they, that FedEx. I'm happy FedEx delivers Chewy around here. Oh yeah. God, yes, yes. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and and I I wish they would start delivering the tidy cat too. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Hey, at least that has a handle. I'm at least it has a handle on the top. Not always. Well, I, I like our packages because they tape over the handle openings, you know. So that's why I carry a blade with me so I can cut them puppies. <laughs> <laughs> because I get one lady has, uh, she's a cat lady, and she she gets the two thirty pound bags in the in the box. Yep. And li lives at the top of the stairs at the furthest townhouse away from the curb. Yep. Yep. The Always works out that way. Mattresses are another fun one to have to deliver too. Oh yeah, the the rolled and vacuum sealed mattresses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We have. I had um... one of those in my, in my semi truck. <laughs> Cut we, the thing and just let it fold out. We had a customer on my primary route who's, unfortunately, their house burnt down um, before Christmas. And they have recently rebuilt and just moved in. And, of course, they're starting from nothing. So, yes, we are there every day. <laughs> mm. But, you know, in those circumstances, I, you know, they're doing what they what they can do. And I know they're just like within this last week and a half moved into that house. And so, you know, I, I, I don't have an issue with that, but honey, when I have to haul your, your 40 pound box of specialty kitty litter up two flights of stairs, because you can't take your butt to the Perfect. store once a month. So we also want to put out there that there are some corrections to the July magazine that were not sent out to people with the magazine. It was just posted to the NRLCA website. And this was on the article from our director of steward operations, Shirley Baffa. The question was, who is eligible to bid for a posted PTF rural carrier assignment? The printed answer was, all substitutes and RCAs who have completed the probationary period in the office are eligible to bid on PTF rural carrier position. And the the correct answer is all substitutes and RCAs who have completed one year of service are eligible to bid on PTF rural carrier positions initially. If the position is not filled in the office, it will be posted district-wide for all PTF rural carriers, substitutes, and RCAs with one year of continuous service as an RCA within the district. If the position is not filled in the district posting, it will be once again posted, it's just that it will once again be posted, but semantics, 
in the original office for all non-probationary RCAs in the office, which means any RCA that has passed their 90 working days. Comments? It's nice of them to admit that they made a mistake to uh, err as uh, human and to forgive as divine. And they should take that in consideration of our present situation. It's it's not surprising that they made that mistake because of the fact that a lot of people do that. And they say they think the probationary period is the time time frame, and it's not. And personally, I think the 90 day work rule should be 90 days. Period. Because some RCAs don't get 90 days for after six seven months because there's not enough work in the office. Or even, or they reach their year before they finish their 90 days, which is also an end of a probationary period, by either one year or 90 days, working yeah. days. I, I think we should, kind of, I think we could align it more like the city side, whereas it's 90 work days or 120 calendar days. We'll have to put that up as a resolution. Mm -hmm. The other aspect of this is technically the original printed answer is correct after all the procedures have been followed. It would also follow up to be correct from the previous contract and not the current contract. Yes. Because that did go and in effect the, with the current contract was the one year for bidding on a PTF position. Yeah. So then the other one, the, the other correction they made in that same section of our Director of Steward, Steward Operations, Shirley Baffa's article on page 11, was, is an RCA who is temporarily unable to fully perform the duties of the position eligible to bid for a posted PTF rural carrier position? Printed answer, no, the RCA must be able to perform all the duties of the PTF position at the time that the bid is awarded, reference, so on and so forth. The correct answer, the RCA must have documentation that they will be able to perform all duties within six months of the award for Memorandum of Understanding 7. The documentation must be submitted prior to the award. Should the RCA not supply the documentation or not be able to perform the full duties within six months, they would not be awarded the position. Thoughts? It's like having a hold down for a national officer who stays in office for years and years and years. And then, you know, finally, when they do retire, <clears throat> you, you lose your, your hold down. Same thing here, just a shorter time period that, you know, for six months time, You've got to hold a position for somebody, and I'm I'm conflicted about that. I really am. I and, and I I haven't I haven't come to terms with you know which way is right. So I'll, I'll abide by the terms of the contract. Well, see, and I'm looking at this from another aspect of this as well. You know, what if you got injured on the job as an RCA and you put in you are you are eligible for this, but your doctor says it'll be three months before you return to work in this this position comes open, you're saying you don't want them to be able to get that position when they're healing from an on-the-job injury. And that's really how I'm taking this, is if you're injured on the job and you're on leave for that, a workman's comp for that, or anything like that, this just holds the position for you so you don't lose your seniority or your position. Or if you're on, let's say, maternity leave. Yeah. You go on maternity leave and something opens up when you're not quite back yet. I mean, that's that's basically what that is doing is... Yeah. Those instances. yeah, Bill, what if you became pregnant, Bill? I'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> so would I we at this point. <laughs> we don't discriminate here. <laughs> you bring up a, a very sensitive subject in Westchester because we have a certain carrier that gets pregnant and delivers at Christmas time, uh, delivers the baby at Christmas time every uh, year for the past six years. It, it's a two-year uh, stint. <laughs> That's talent. That's talent. Yeah, it does. I'll tell you what. <laughs> but, um, you know, in, in the case of a pregnancy, okay, something like that. But, okay, I, I also have experience in the private sector. So when I turn around and, and I have a position I have to fill, and I know I have a qualified employee who is working in an administrative position because they can't do the physical aspects of a job, but I need an employee now, you know, do, do, do I turn around and give it to somebody temporarily and they turn out to be a great worker and, you know, fulfill all the responsibilities of the job and then pull them off after the other employee is healed up. I mean, I've, I've got to look at, at the, the good for all employees, not just the one, you know, who, who's injured. 
That's why I'm, that's why I'm conflicted. You know, when the injured employee comes back, they would step into that job and make you proud. But in the meantime, you still have that open position and it needs to be filled. So I'll, I'll welcome, welcome anybody's comments in this regard, because like I said, I'm, I'm conflicted with this. I'm on both sides of it. I understand both sides of it, you know, yeah. but at the same time, I also have to think about, you know, what would be fair to a carrier who did something that, you know, they weren't um, expecting. I mean, well, pregnancies are, pregnancies can be expected. I can understand yeah. that. Yeah, but, if you, you know, if you, if you do this, you get that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but if you're injured on the job, you know, a carrier slips and falls off of a porch because the porch step broke and they didn't know it was broken and it falls apart underneath them and they were wearing the proper shoes. Well, um, I guess the, the best caveat for this whole situation in regards to dictating how you do it is FMLA, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, basically invoking that, you know, it, it ensures your rights and privileges to be entitled to that position. So, like I said, it, it goes down to the contract, you know, as far as, you know, what I would say, how it falls. Yeah. Now that we're on done with that, um, there are updates to the Rex Q&A. It was updated on July 27th. Uh, if you have access to the NRLCA website, you can actually go in there. It is actually underneath the home page. Under Rex Resources, it's a searchable Q&A, so you can search for your specific question that you have. They have cleaned up some of the contradictory questions and answers, the answers that contradicted other answers they had on the question and answer. I'm still reading through it personally, but there's some really good information in there. What do you guys think? I've glanced at it. I haven't had a chance to actually sit down and read it. Um, but yeah, no, I have to agree with you. They did clean up some stuff in there, going through, skimming through it. And there is, there's always really decent information in there. And lo a lot of it's not contradictory like it was before, which is a good thing. Yeah, well, I, like, as always. I, like the, I like the fact they got Rex training on there. Yeah, that's a whole yeah. new section. Yes. And they have a new... Yeah, you have... A uh, new thing for uh, map training for your DPM and LTM, which I know a lot of people still ask about, um, which I totally get for those offices that uh, never did it correctly or maintain it like they should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got our updating done on uh, Thursday. And... There's that. There's also the 4241A cheat sheet. Mm-hmm. A Rex maintenance job age, aid, age, aid, a delivery point manager user guide, a mapping delivery point manager checklist, and a rural route AMS edit book maintenance SWI. There's also a diagnostic test on that. So the SWI gives you the time frame of how your mapping is supposed to be updated. So during the month, the first 10 days of the month, your edit books must be updated by the carrier. Then between days two and 11, management is to submit verified edit books to the AMS office via mail or webbies by day 11 of each month. So that means they have to go on the computer and input the changes you've put in the edit book. And in some districts, mail those edit books off to AMS. Then days 12 through 20, the AMS office will process changes by close of business on day 20 of each month. They will mail the edit books back to each office by day 21 of each month. On days 23 through 30 or 31, if it's that kind of a month, supervisor designee in the presence of the regular rural carrier or assigned RCA coverage, whoever's doing the hold down, is required to log into the delivery point manager, click download, plot missing deliveries, view or clear issues, and submit. Then log into line of travel manager 
and update your mapping on that as well. Once they are finalized, the supervisor or designee must initial the DPM and LTM portions of the AMS edit book activity log. This is supposed to be done every month. If it is not being done, you need to contact your designated union representative immediately. This is your money. And everybody hold up your hands if that's being done in your office every month. My hands I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> Hand raised. Hand raised. Only because, uh, you know, I'm a facilitator and my management is at the point now of not even wanting to touch it. So, yes, it is yep, done every exactly. month in my office because I make sure it gets done every month in my office. Well, in my we, office as well. We used to have a steward in my office and uh, made sure it was done, but not anymore. Been a regular for over a year, have yet to update my mapping, and when asked about it, my supervisor says they don't have enough management coverage to make sure it's done. Yeah, get a hold of your union rep. <laughs> I, yeah, I, the management definitely. excuses are just... They file, can, file, you, file. You, you know, they can they somebody can volunteer to be a facilitator. It's just a two-hour training video on the computer, and you're certified. Um. Yeah. And if you're good with computers, you could actually just do it without even taking the training. I would highly it's suggest. It's that simple. It, it, it is. But I it highly is, suggest but... taking the training. Yes, but absolutely. There's also training resources on the computer to look at when they actually allow you on that computer. They can pull it up through the, the uh, blue page. Mm -hmm. The management has access to that. I actually, you know, my postmaster was gone this week, so I actually had to show the uh, supervisor how to get to it. <laughs> I was like, wait, I'm not used to doing it on this computer. And I'm like, oh, here it is. And uh, I had to lead her into it and show her where it was. So if they're, not, if they're not doing it with you or they're doing it behind your back, you definitely need to contact your designated union rep. Absolutely. Because we're coming up on crunch time next month. You're going to do the mapping just before the mini mail survey. Or is the mini mail survey is just starting, depending on how it works out. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to be right there at the mini mail survey doing the mapping. I had so a, you're going to want to do it now. I had a lot of carriers when we were doing their mapping that were like, well, I've got changes in my edit book. I said, then that will have to go on next month if they weren't in at the beginning of this month. I said, those updates yep. won't take effect until we do the mapping in another month. Oh, okay. Get your edit books done. Yeah, we've had I had a few of those where I was just like, okay, why is, you know, boxes that come up inactive that should never have been inactive? And yeah. Well, I got this one. Yeah, I, I saw know. an email on that. I saw an email on that. Management has set the program that um supposedly if a mailbox has not received first class mail in 6 months, it automatically marks it inactive. And the thing is, is this box gets first class mail all the time. So, so there's problems with that system as well. And it's the first so, box of the mail stop too. So yeah, it's there. There is issues, you know. And I just it have behooves them, you to go through. Yeah, it yeah. does. And I have them double check their edit books too as we're doing it, just to make sure things are in the corresponding. I know I had to change a couple of them that were in the wrong uh, order, just because we had a hardship that was in a grouping and mail st or mail stop and mailbox grouping and now they're a hardship so we had to ungroup it move the box down to after the group regroup the group and yeah i mean or you get a new box that comes in and you're trying to t you know and management think being helpful and going in and thinks they're being helpful and going in and adding it into webbies prior to you actually turning your edit book in so it's up and then they put it in the wrong no it was supposed to be for that house not after that house yeah Excuse it's it, it, it's fun to see all the other little miss things that get done when it comes to the edit books when you're going through the dpm but yeah it's we got we got ours done this week so that yeah. definitely helps and the mini mail no survey idea. coming up starting what the 25th yep I, and I a, you're gonna i i have a question for y'all mm-hmm do you know when we started this Rex program? A while ago. <laughs> when, when, which start do you mean? When it was, you know, uh, initially brought brought to light that we were going to go go this way. I 
believe it was 2020 they were talking about it. No, 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 no. When the whole they were talking about making it live, and then in 2021 they were talking about making it go live in April of 2022. Then in April of 2022 they said, "All right, we're going to go live," and they went, "Oh, we're going to hold off until September." And then in September they said, "We're going to go live," and they're like, "Oh no, we're going to hold off on it." And then April of this year they went live with it. Okay, I I, I think you're missing the, the the gist of my question. The the Rex program was initially brought forward as, as a form of compensation for us in 2012. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know who our president was then? Yes. Nope. Who was it? Jeanette Dwyer. I wasn't. Okay. Who's a dark horse for uh, the convention this year to run as president? You want and only. Jeanette Dwyer. I want to know why anybody would consider having her back in the saddle again after this fiasco. Well, she has a right to run for the position. You have a right to run for the position as well. I have a right to run for the position. Kristen has a right to run for the position. Any of our listeners who are members in good standing can run for the position. I am not. But it's up to the delegates who are in the audience at Nashville Convention as to who actually gets that position. So, again, I go Mm -hmm. back to if you know the delegates going for your state, get a hold of them. Tell them who you want in office as your national president. Because the only way you can affect change is to either be a delegate or get your delegate to vote the way you want. Get your people together. Get them all together. Get them calling your delegates. Get them messaging them on Facebook if you can find them on there. Finding them on other social media sites. Getting a hold of them that way. If you want to get a hold of your delegates, that's on you. Because your voice is the only way to affect any positive change within the union because you are the union i'm like i'm sitting here going wow i think i should have dropped the mic on that one <laughs> nah, i wouldn't go that far no no i'm not quite everybody just went quiet after that <laughs> <laughs> well but, sometimes um, you just have to have let james go on his roll you know? exactly you guys let me go on my roll we all let you go do your roles so yeah no it's we let bill go on his as long as he doesn't go down a rabbit hole oh, <laughs> but i really like rabbits i do i love rabbits hey they're a tasty meat well not a lot but there's they are tasty yeah tastes like chicken oh, oh god no <laughs> And, and my apologies to Liz Lightfoot, who would raise bunnies for 4-H clubs and a prize-winning bunny rabbit. So I'm sorry, but they're delicious. <laughs> I've never had rabbit, so I can't uh, comment on that one at all. So, Rabbit, squirrel, raccoon, snake. Possum, muskrat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have had gator. Muskrat, right? right? Bison, yeah. moose. I've had bison. I've had elk. I've had moose. I've had gator. Uh, octopus. Oh yeah, you know, there's a few things out there. I try, I tried so, to eat octopus, but it, it stuck to my face. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says you're you're supposed to cook it first, Bill. <laughs> right. Probably made you look better too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So the mini mail survey coming up is going to run identical to the one we had in April, unless, of course, your mess office really screwed it up. And it's completely possible they're going to screw it up. But there are important things you need to look out for. Now, Bill, you got things they should look out for? Well, one of the things I saw on a social media was in regard to remeasurements of you distances and somebody said well you could add distance you know and time distance equals time well you also could lose so if you're comfortable with what you got earlier this year i would kind of stay away from that unless you have a major increase in, in your office time there as, as far as the distances are concerned um 
a, a point of interest because I got a call on Saturday from my sub. They got a uh, every EDDM, every door direct mailing, and it had a barcode on there. And she says, I just scanned that, right? And I said, yes. And I said, yeah, that's for your delivery confirmation to the, 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 the printer. And she goes, and that's all. I said, no, then you have to put it in Rex. They thought, she thought that if she scanned that barcode, it automatically went into Rex. And I would have lost value for that. Now, mind you, she's been trained. But you have to refresh people's memories all the time in regard to what gets scanned, how it gets entered, WSS versus WSH. It, it's constant education, folks. It really is. And if management sits there and tells you, you know, you only have to do six scans, go get go get your cheat sheet, you know, off of Rural Infinite, off our national website, wherever form that you utilize and learn how to use those scans, okay? Don't cheat. Learn how to use them. If you cheat, then you have to defend it. But if you do it the right way, then you have nothing to worry about whatsoever. And one of the updates that I saw in the Q&A for this mini mail survey is any bundles of WSH you get are to be counted for the mini mail survey as manual pieces. That is in the Q&A. So they become part of your manual with regards to what the clerks are sorting. Now, I've seen it come that it's to be put in WSS, to put it as WF. Do not put it in as WSS and things like that. The Q&A says to count it during the mini mail survey. That is what the union says. So you are to count it during the mini mail survey if you get any WSH. But and, it's carrier discretion. Yes. And, and the thing of it is, this is in direct contravention to what they were telling us that these were included in the radar reports. The same mm -hmm. radar report couldn't justify to the day that you received those bundles. Mm -hmm. So here we are again, a conundrum of, you know, trying to right the wagon after it's gone off the cliff. And then the other part of it is DPS errors. Ubum is included in your DPS errors. They were arguing last mini mail survey that the first day it was counted and then the, the next 14 days it wasn't. And then the last day, oh, ovens counted. So it is counted in your DPS errors as a letter. Each count upside down is still four equals one. Each upside, every upside down letter is one fourth of a letter. And don't forget your forwards, miss sense, miss sorts, and all that. Yeah, all those all those are considered quote unquote DPS errors and will be added to your manual letters that you've processed from your hot case and things like that. Anything that you pull now, out of your DPS you have to bring back to the office with you. And if you case everything in the beginning, yeah. take it take it for a ride. Take it for a ride and then count it when you get back. Because management will try and tell you, oh, you got to do this before you leave. Nope, that's end of shift. It, it's an end of shift duty, so take it with you and bring it back at the end of the day. Yes, it's a little bit more work. You get straight time for it on end of shift duty, but carry your discretion. And you get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Who does the edit so, book and mapping if the route is vacant? We have an ox route that has no one assigned to it at all. The sub that does it the most. If your most senior sub is the one doing it the most often, then that's the person who should be doing the edit book and mapping. If somebody's holding it down, then they're the ones that do the mapping. The issue comes in is a lot of RCAs aren't fully trained on all these scans. People aren't stepping up and teaching our RCAs all these scans. And they need to know it just as much as we do, especially if they're on a hold down, because that's their money. I think that, you know, that's their own money. Well, and I told the RCA who's going to be holding down the route, um, coming up here in a month and a half when uh, the regular retires. And I told him, I said, dude, I will, because that would be right about the time our seasonals start taking off for the for the winter. And I, I let him know. I said, I will, you know, I'll sit, you know, you got changes, write them down, and I'll sit down and go through the edit book with you and show you how to do it. There's no reason why a sub can't 
shouldn't know how to handle a basic change in and out of book. And I only say that because if you do become a designated 79 or 74, you're the one responsible for that edit book. If a carrier is off for a, a, a long amount of time, somebody's got to keep up that edit book. I know in the past, people didn't, but now that they are supposed to be done monthly, if you have a sub that does awesome, you know, show them the basics of an edit book, just in the event of if you're off for any amount of time or you retire or you're fed up and you you leave, (laughs) you know, they aren't going to be left at the mercy of management showing them how to do an edit book. No, they won't. Now, do you agree that it should be the OJI that should be teaching them this stuff? Uh, I guess that would have to be on a case by case basis. I mean, in my, in my instance as being an OJI, and also being the one that's potentially taking that route over, yeah, I'm going to show him how to do that at a book. Because that's, you know, that's the last thing I want to do is come in and they have to completely update everything. I just think, it, you know, once somebody's comfortable on a route, they're situated, there's no reason why you can't just show them, like I said, the basic activating, deactivating a box, especially activating. You know, when you have routes that have you know, changes consistently every month. You've got, you know, a house that finally sold or you have people that come in and out seasonally. You know, there's no reason why they shouldn't know how to activate and deactivate in the edit book or even add a brand new box in. And I'm going to say this, it is very difficult to reactivate a box now. Yeah. I had a box that I reactivated two months ago. It finally went fully active in this latest update. Yep. Because you got to have the breadcrumbs so, showing that you've been delivering to it. Uh-huh. Yeah, we had so that. it's difficult. Yeah, we had that and, um, happen on one of our routes. Not this time happened, but the last time where she went to activate a couple more boxes, and it wouldn't let me do it because when you hit go into the LTM, it's throwing up the errors that you have to go back to the DPM, and it's showing up the errors that it's a potential inactive box because there was no breadcrumbs showing going to that box. Yep, just happened to us. Um, one of our carriers does schools. Mm-hmm. And all the school mail for the two months that the schools are closed goes to the administration building. So the carrier blew by those, those stop points all month long, went to do her, do her mapping, and it throws you right back to the DPM because she's not stopping at the schools. Mm-hmm. And so we're putting in a notice to upper management that, hey, these schools haven't been vacant for 90 days. Why is the DPM throwing an error? And even though they'll say, so, well, the informed visibility showing, like you would on a hold, the informed visibility showing they're getting mail that day, so it's getting credited. But actually, if it's the system is automatically deactivating it because the breadcrumbs aren't showing you stopping, then yeah. So that's another error issue that we've found with the mapping program. Now, this is a big one that I just saw in the Q and A as I was just scrolling through. Um, what is coverage factor, and what credit do we receive for boxes served on a particular day? Now, this is quite interesting how they answered it. To put it simply, if GPS breadcrumbs show you stopped at the box for any reason, it is credited as delivered, and or if informed delivery shows any mail for the delivery, it is credited as delivered and or if you deliver a box holder or walk sequence letters or walk sequence flats, you are credited with 100% of boxes delivered for that day. These items are entered on the day delivered, not necessarily on the day received in the office. Any of these three conditions above will credit the boxes delivered that day. Also, on any day you are credited with a box holder or walk sequence mailing. Every box is credited as delivered. However, right just below it, if my centralized delivery shows no informed delivery that day, yet I have random letters addressed to one or more of those boxes, how would Rex know it was delivered? Answer, the system will not recognize those boxes as delivered on that one day. The coverage percentage will be affected for that day out of that one day out of 301 delivery days in the year. The coverage factor was imposed on the parties by the engineering panel. So they're throwing it off on the engineering panel. 
We are bound by the terms. Remember, each day you have a box holder or a walk sequence mailing, it is credited as 100% coverage. Make sure you scan the WSS. Phew! <laughs> Bill, yeah. you want to take this one? Oh, God. Th this one here is a, a major foo bar, especially when it comes with the cluster box units. Uh, one, one second. I had to get a kiss from my wife. Uh, it, it, yeah, the informed delivery. Okay, so let's let's say you don't have a box holder that day. Okay, and you have the informed delivery, and it's telling you you have mail for ten out of twenty, you know, CB uh, units in the CBU. Does it take into account missorted mail? Does it take into account uh, for misthrown mail? Does it take into account forwarded mail? What does it take into account? Because it doesn't seem that this system, you know, is accurate at all in regards to the, the 100%. Well, folks, you know, 100% is a matter of conjecture because I've never seen anybody boast that they had 100% coverage yet. Everybody's in the 90s or 80s. Some people are down in the 60s. Yeah, we have a so, one in the 30s. I have one know, in the 30s. How can that possibly be? I mean, because you know, they aren't it, counting CBUs. Exactly, and, and and I'm telling you, you know, if you're one of these people out in Texas, Arizona, even Kansas, you're out there 109 degrees, and you know, sweating your ass off, and you're throwing mail, and you go back and you, you get a, a 30 percent, you know, coverage factor, 35 percent, 40. Folks, you, you think it's hot outside? Boy, I I would light that place up. I really would. It, because, you know, the, there's so many flaws in this system. And the entire system, okay, and, and this, this is what I've heard. It's like Obamacare. You have to vote for it and pass it before you can read it. The Rex program is exactly like Obamacare. You have to implement it to see what's wrong with it. We've had three intellectual giants in their fields sit there and point by point dictate the terms, the times, the values for everything we do. And yet the system sits there and says, you don't get credit for it. I'd love to get these engineers, put them in the jump seat and have them run routes see what we really do this is yes rex can be a better system but right now it's a shit show folks it wouldn't really that be is. them crossing crafts if they were riding in the jump seat with us wouldn't that be them crossing crafts i'm sorry the, enge joke. the, enge the engineers uh, i don't think so they're they're not in the craft so <laughs> but um here's the other but, other as the other aspect of this think about how hard management has been pushing for neighborhoods to get CBUs installed. Subdivisions with CBUs installed. Yep. Here's your reason why. This is why they wanted you to have CBUs instead of curbside delivery, because they'd pay you less for it, because coverage factor can't be calculated for a CBU with raw mail until they figure out a way to actually see what's going into those raw trays that are gonna be routed to your route. I don't know. It should be because they're I, they're obviously routing them to the office in those trays. So obviously the machine's putting them to that that zip code well, already. Well, I, I'm going to disagree with you about the CBUs about in the post office. They did it as a, a cost effective measure because now you're making one stop instead of 20, 30, 40. Okay, and, and as a as a cost procedure, okay, it makes sense. I, I think they then they have been doing this for years in regards to new developments, even before Rex was actually put on the table. My problem is here. Here's a real simple thing: clerk mail. How do, how do they monitor clerk mail? They don't. Survey. That's it. Plain and simple. They don't. So you know. I, I've got mail for 14 out of 30, and I'm going to get credit for 14. Now I'm below 50%. Mm -hmm. and, and excuse my French, but are you fucking kidding me? 
and that and by the way folks that's not french that that's that's full bill straight up yes it is could have gone chinese Fu king but yeah like like i said rex rex is a a train wreck because everything hasn't been factored in considered you you gotta you gotta implement it to see what's wrong with it no no there's too much wrong with this that it should have never been implemented and without the transparency which we still don't have okay it should have never been agreed upon mini mail survey should have never Manager's been still changing to. the rules on us. Manager's yes. still changing the rules on us. Yeah. I mean, obviously, with the WSH count now, you know, in the bundled flats, here we are again. You know, I thought these things here's, were set in stone. But now we're a different way it. to do it for this one. Yeah, here's a different way to do it for this survey compared to the one we did last survey, compared to what mm. we were doing just before the survey. And watch it come down to the very next one where we're going to be counting every flat that comes in anyways. Like we did back yeah. in the day. Back in the now, day, we'll be, yes, actually, back. we'll be measure. We'll be measuring them with a ruler. Oh, that's the good line. Then we'll get those blue rulers back. Yeah, they Oops. they can take my blue ruler out of my cold dead fingers. <laughs> yep, that's that's how I still t- tell whether it's a rigid part if it's a parcel or not when it's rig- a rigid article, because my manager has stated that that is how she determines what's a parcel or not. Hmm is by the ruler size so i'm not going to argue with my postmaster i actually fully agree with her on that one <laughs> there is well, some decent to... management out there shocking but there is ones well, that gotta... actually learn their job and do their job and understand their job and understand the rural contract well you need to clone her and send her to about you know eight thousand other offices i have had five officers ask us offices to ask us to send her back to them <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Of the not year. I, we've got her tied down in our office. She is stuck in our office until she retires. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I hope she's 68. I hope she stays on even past that. Personally, I hope she stays on until she just she just can't come walking in the door anymore. She's that good. Hmm. I've had good management would... in the past, but. That was when I first started, so <laughs> that lasted a whopping three and a half, four, well, wow, well, it was three and a half years when I transferred, so that lasted a good two and a half years. <laughs> it, it's funny, I, I had a good supervisor for three years, a good postmaster for four, and after that, they've just gone downhill, and just when you think they can't get worse, they do. <laughs> oh, yeah, they do. And yeah, you know, I, I am sick and tired of the bullying and the micromanaging now, to to the point of trying to squeeze every nickel out of us. Oh, it, I agree. It's gotten to it's it's gotten to a point. It's it's, it's almost personal. It is it, it is borderline harassment in my eyes. Oh, it's not borderline. It is. Yeah. It is harassment if they continue to push that. Oh, why are you inputting this? Why are you inputting that? My question is, is why aren't these other carriers inputting that? Mm-hmm. Why aren't you talking to them about not inputting it? Because why aren't you working on, them. why aren't you working to up the evaluations in your office so you can earn more pay? Well, you'd have to think that far ahead, James. No, you need to ask that to your postmaster when they start coming down on you on that stuff is, why aren't you helping us make sure that we get the right scans in so that way we can increase our evaluations well, to increase your budget? That's how you got to phrase it. Our route well, going up increases your budget. Why aren't you working with us for over everybody to ensure that every carrier increases their route evaluation to increase your office budget? But then you have the, That's all the they care about. but then you have the pooms and the impoos, whatever you want to call them. Get on have, them for it. Have been overheard. Yeah. Keep the routes as small as possible. Mm-hmm. And, and there's and, there's and, a reason why the impoos are doing that is because they don't want to hire people to cover the routes. They don't want to hire subs. They don't want to hire more people to pay. They want to keep the routes small, get everybody down to H route so they don't have to have subs in the offices anymore, even though it's in the contract that every route gets a sub. And right. in my district, you have management, you know, from the postmaster down to the 204B who are in fear of their jobs. Yes. So it's it, it, it's a it's a disastrous atmosphere. It, it's, it's toxic. 
in the post office. It really is my office. So if, you, if your manager comes to you and talks with you about your inputs on your scanner, make sure you say, I wish to have this discussion with my designated union rep present. Mm -hmm. Your designated union rep needs to be involved in any conversations regarding Rex. Management has gone too far making unilateral decisions when it comes to Rex that the union needs to be involved. No ifs, ands, or buts. And what if you can't get a hold of your designated union rep? Go above them. If you, you can't get a hold of your designated union rep, contact your assistant district rep. If your assistant district rep isn't available or you don't have one, contact your district rep. If your district rep doesn't get a hold of you, contact the director of steward relations, nah, Bridget nah, Bozio, nah. or up in or the director of labor operations, Bridget Boziak, or director of steward operations, Shirley Baffa, up at National. Oh, well, you got to hit the yeah. NROs first, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to get the NROs first. No, that, I just go right to them because they're the ones who are in charge of all of them. So. And they'll say, they're the did ones you who talk tell them? Did, yeah, they're they the ones still, who tell them what yeah. to do. And, and they'll, if they'll you, ask you, did you talk to your NRO, though? And if you go to your NRO and your NRO says, did you contact your ADR? Yes, I've tried. No response. Have you contacted your DR? Yes. No response. And you're talking to your NRO, and they take down your info, and, all right, I will get a hold of your DR. And you have yet to hear back from your DR. Anybody? Then you contact up above. Yep. But don't sit on your, don't sit on your heels. Be active in this. Be proactive. Rattle the cages. You know, the, Somebody's got to do something. The one thing that just breaks my heart across the board is seeing and hearing all the complaints of union reps that blow people off or don't return phone calls or seem to have play in the pocket of management and are of no assistance. I've seen That's way, part of the reason we're here. way too much of That's that part of the recently. Reason we're, here. we're here to get you engaged and talking with your union reps because this right here is the most important thing in the world for rural carriers is the rec system, the mini mail survey, everything involved with your paycheck, getting everybody to get a hold of their steward system, even if you have to work your way up to the top, but rattling those cages and getting them to go, hey, pay attention to me, this is important, is the only way to get this union working for you. I hate to say that, but if somebody's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, you need to go up the chain. Because at, at the most, if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, they could lose their certification, they could actually get a labor charge with the NLRB for failure to represent. It can become a big mess all the way up to national. They want to solve it at the lowest level possible. And if the lowest level possible is not working at it, you need to go to the next higher level. It's that simple. And don't stop until you're satisfied. Correct. Even if they say, oh, this, this, we can't argue that, you are entitled to file a grievance for anything you feel management is violating. And just as a reminder, everybody, we are the only craft to where the employee, the carrier, the craft employee has to initiate that grievance with the exception Unless of a class action. With the exception of a class action. So if you contact your steward because you want to file a grievance and then you get upset because your grievance didn't get filed, it's because you didn't file it. You have to fi you have to be the one to file that grievance, and all stewards on all levels are upheld to the same timeline once that grievance has been filed. Unfortunately, that is the way it is, and a lot of people are afraid of retaliation. And I'm going to just say this. Most likely, people are going to be retaliated against, but that's another grievance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the biggest... The biggest... The biggest thing any carrier can do is stick to their guns when they're right. So if you file a grievance and you win it and management starts retaliating at you, file another grievance. You're going to win that one when they're retaliating against you. And if they're starting to retaliate against you on the workroom floor, say, hold on, let me grab my casemate over here as a witness. Document, document, document. Document, 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 and have witnesses. If you, because if guess what? Your management manager, doesn't like witnesses. <laughs> and witnesses don't have to be your specific craft. If there's a clerk that's standing there that witnessed the whole altercation, put them down as a witness. 
if there was a city carrier who came back in and witnessed the altercation, they are a witness. If the janitor or maintenance witnesses it, they are a witness. It does not have to be craft specific. And when it comes down to it, when you're asking questions as as this goes on, your steward should be sitting there and supporting you through this all and helping you through this whole process, helping you understand how to fill out your uh, grievance form and work walking you through the whole process. And there are some people who are willing to step up and actually be a steward in their office. And we applaud you. you. We applaud you. Because it's better for the craft as a whole to have a steward in every single office in the country that has rural carriers in it. Even if it doesn't it's a matter if you one route office. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you have three hundred routes and you have five stewards or six stewards, or if you're a one route office working by yourself and you're the designated steward in the office. Every office should have a steward because you're there watching what's going on. You're there telling management to, to that's not right in the service talk. You're there holding management accountable. Even if there aren't grievances being filed over everything, you're the first line of defense to the rest of your carriers. Sure, both sides are going to be mad at you, especially when some grievances get lost or at step two, it gets settled for language, things like that. But it's you're there to benefit the craft and your brothers and sisters in the craft. Sometimes it's a thankless job. Very much sometimes so. you get the highest sometimes you get the highest praise in the land. Sometimes you work with a postmaster who you just sit down and have a conversation with and then they go, I see your point, I see it in the contract. Don't worry, we don't have to have a grievance on this. I'll get this fixed right now. Those are the best offices, by the way. If you can just sit down and have a conversation and they fix it, best offices in the world. Then you have some managers that take it all the way up to step four because they're that stubborn. Yep, I, I like the office. I, I like the office where the you know the PM has a uh, mm, fit. I'll, I'll tone down. Uh, has a fit because the carrier filed a grievance and uh, then goes out on the floor and berates the carrier <laughs> in front of everybody. And then they turn around and there's Bill handing the carrier another grievance form. And and the postmaster goes, "What's that for?" I said, "Oh, hostile work environment, threatening." Yep. Harassment. Yep. And, he, and, he like, you, and he turns around and he says, you can't prove that. And I said, anybody else hear him holler? And everybody's raising their hand. And it's like the funniest thing because you just see him shrink and walk away. I love that feeling. Yeah. As stated in here, management bullies are cowards. And once you stand up to them, they know they leave you alone and move on to their next victim. And that's when you just, you know, trying to push everybody to stand up for yourselves. I mean, that's really, especially if you don't have a local steward, if nobody has stepped up or you, you know, you're not in a position to step up, you know, still step up for yourself. Even if it's not for your entire office, step up for yourself. That's so true because in my office, uh, people, you know, in the past would say, oh, you know, they they don't mess with you, Bill, because you're the steward. They haven't messed with me for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I was a steward either. I knew the contract. I read things. I, I got on the website, rule infinite. You know, I, I, I taught myself and, you know, when it came to, you know, came push to shove man, I did most of the pushing and you don't have to be a steward to do that, to push back. Sometimes it takes just one carrier stepping up and standing up to management to change the entire dynamic of the office. Oh yeah, and definitely. Standing up and enforcing and enforcing the contract on management and saying, that's not right can well, change it's, the it's, entire dynamic it is it's like certain carriers change the dynamic in the office by their actions you know and i'm not talking about good actions okay the, in this same sense you know standing up the management can change the dynamic in a positive way mm-hmm. absolutely wow wow if, if kristen can do that or bill or james can do that then maybe i can <laughs> well, yes you can yep yep and on top of that every every USPS employee is required by a joint statement to be treated with dignity, fairness, and respect. There are two joint statements out on this. One, because of Royal Oak 
And I can't remember what the other one was for, but I know Royal Oak because that one's actually very close to me, not just mm -hmm. geographically. But I knew somebody who was assigned to Royal Oak who luckily wasn't working that there, there that day, was assigned instead of Royal Oak to Farmington Hills that day. But if they would have been there, they probably would have would have tried to stop the person knowing their personality. But everybody, dignity, fairness, and respect should be the motto of every person in the post office. And management does not like doing that in a lot of offices. No. I, and it's your, your, it's your job as a rural carrier to enforce that. Mm -hmm. And then you got the, you got management that treat the different genders differently. And <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, or they have their special, special carriers that they work with. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Familiar with that but as well. But you want to make sure that you follow your contract, the PO603, and all the other postal manuals you can get your hands on. And they're all You want to know your job inside and out. They're all available. Whether on ruralinfo.net, you can search for them online. You can find you can find the city carriers ones online too. Yeah, you can do a you Google find out search. what they have to do. Yeah, the NALC you can access them right on their site. You don't even have to be a member of their site to access them. All right, guys, we're gonna oh, wind this down tonight. To <laughs> we're gonna wind this down tonight and uh, call it so we can get the editing done and get stuff up. Mm -hmm. I have a long day ahead of me tomorrow and. It's been an emotional weekend, so we will. Uh, oh, we understand that. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, uh, your final uh, words for this evening, James? Well, you know, it's it's coming to crunch time again for the mini mail survey, and it's going to come every six months. So, take your time now to learn all the details you can. Get yourself prepared. Know know what you're supposed to be doing. If you can access the Q and A. Go through all the mini mail survey training stuff they have. You can access that on the NRLCA site or on ruralinfo.net. Just be prepared and ready to go because it, this is your paycheck. Every scan you do, every input you make is your paycheck. And if you start feeling overwhelmed, take a step back, take a deep breath, and step back in since Josh isn't here. I figured I'd make his statement. <laughs> Happy birthday to his wife, by the way. Yes, but just do do your job. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other, and be safe out there. Bill, all of you out there, your your do inalienable rights of respect, understanding, compassion, and if you're not getting it from your your post office, then stand up for yourself. Um, I know that's hard for a lot of people to do uh, based on their personalities their upbringing or whatever. But the first person to stand up to management will set off a chain reaction and the momentum will grow and everybody will start standing up for themselves, for their rights under the contract, under federal law. And you can make that a better workplace situation. Uh, we have too many people bailing RCAs. People are retiring early. They're just getting out of the toxic situation. Well, the toxic situation won't change until you decide to make that change. And it starts with you. Get involved, get educated, learn the rules, M38, PO603, ELM, the contract, everything, anything you can get your hands on. Take 10 minutes out of your day at the end of the day and educate yourselves because the only person going to protect your paycheck is you. Everybody go out, be safe, hydrate, pull over, take needed breaks. When you feel overwhelmed, get out of those tin cans that, you know, the post office gives you and, you know, just make sure you get home to your family. You're the most important delivery at the end of the day. Make sure you make that delivery. Everybody take care. God bless. Thank you guys. Yes. Again, we're still in July, so definitely keep hydrated. Try to stay cool as much as possible and uh, be safe this week. And we'll see you back next week.